everyone! So, in my last video, I talked about the changes that I'd made this past year and the things that I'd learnt in art. And I've gotten quite a few questions about my new lighting process in particular. I did give a little demo in the video itself, but I guess that wasn't in-depth enough. So I'm going to try and do a better job this time around in its own video. I'll start by explaining how my images are structured, so you can try this out too. Most of the parts of the process I already have a tutorial on, so I'll have a link to my playlist of tutorials in the description too, if there's anything else that you'd like to go more in depth with. I'll also explain what I keep in mind with this new technique, just before a speed paint of me colouring these two different lighting scenarios to really demonstrate how all of this works. Okay, so these are the two images I plan on colouring. I have it separated into a few different parts. There are the flat colours, the shadows, the overlay, and then the soon-to-be uh, lighting on top of that. The overlay layer isn't really needed, but it, I've always included in my process and it certainly makes things, I think, look a lot nicer, so that's in there. And then for the shadows, there are the fill shadows, which in my old process I would have gone I would have done it the other way and I just would have painted them in and job done there. And then there is also the ambient occlusion, which I have a separate tutorial on that as well. And then just above the image, I have the color of the light that I plan on using for each of these. Usually a really dark, desaturated color as well. That tends to work best. And that's because of how Color Dodge as a layer actually works. Color Dodge often does a really good job of saturating midtones while blowing out the really, really light colors, which for highlights is generally what you want. Though you do have to be careful if your image is super bright to begin with, because then you're just gonna have a bad time. You can usually correct this by having a fill shadow layer and just darkening the image as a whole. With Color Dodge as a layer mode specifically, you can kind of, well, it is in fact division. It's dividing the colors or the image underneath by the inverted color you're using on top. So as a rule of thumb, most colors you're going to use with this are going to be in this, this bottom half here. You really don't want to touch too high up because then none of the colors really at the top here register as anything other than pure white. Let me see if I can just give a demonstration. It gets really, really bright. So you don't want that, you want something more usable like this. So now I'm gonna go ahead and actually color all of this to really, well, demonstrate this technique. So I start the image with how I'd want it to look with everything in shadow, and for the one on the left, it's a much darker scene, so the fill shadow layer's color is darker, and I think it's a little bit more saturated as well compared to the one on the right. Throughout the speed paint, I do adjust them a little bit here and there because I'm not completely happy with how they were in the beginning, which is... That's kind of the nice thing about this, you can go in really at any point and change and adjust things if you don't feel it is quite right, whereas there isn't that flexibility with the other method. So a little bit about the images themselves, the one on the right is hopefully somewhat familiar if you saw my 360 Utao cover of Happy Shape. This is the original protagonist for that song and his name is Toshiyuki and I love him a lot. I am currently waiting on a keychain of him to arrive in the mail, which should be any day now, so looking forward to that. On the left is a character whose name is Geist, and he's the protagonist of the song Limelight, which I also really would like to cover soon. Both of these songs were created by a producer named Hachiya Nanashi. They're very quickly becoming one of my absolute favorites. They were also a part of the team that made One Off Mind, which was another song that I really, really liked. They haven't been active for a super long time, from what I can tell, but even so, they have like a criminally low amount of subscribers for the content they are producing, and so I will leave a link to their channel in the description below. Please go check them out, they are amazing. The artist as well, they go by Koron. They do an amazing amount of work for the videos that they illustrate for, amounts that I would really like to work up to one day because what they produce really are just works of art in my opinion. I really think they make quality stuff. So I will leave a link to their Twitter too. I really, really, really encourage you to go check these guys out, especially Koran, because I just admire them so much and I could probably gush about them for a hell of a lot longer, but I'm going to uh, keep, <laughs> keep
keep it fairly short. Towards the end of the lighting, you will see me go under the lighting layers and make a new one and just to apply the subsurface scattering. It's been the neatest way I found it uh, to be applied and it also works for subtle color changes and things like that to the lighting you might want to add. So that's about it. I think that's as best as I can possibly showcase my process. I probably will still go in and sort of tweak some things here and there, but the bulk of the lighting is definitely done and the finished image shouldn't look too different to what's on screen right now. If there is anything that's still confusing, feel free to let me know down in the comments and I'll do my best to respond. Thank you very much for watching and I hope it filled any blanks that you may have had about this process.